O grave, where is thy victory? Victory lies in Jesus. Amen. Victory lies in Jesus, and I'm glad it does. Say good morning to everybody. No, I didn't get a side job at Walmart. <laughs> it says, smile, Jesus loves you. Amen. How many believes that? Well, then you've got a reason to smile because Jesus loves you. Amen. Jesus loves you. It's good to be here this morning. Good to see each one that come out our way. We're going to be over in 1 Peter chapter 1 to start off with this morning. If you got your Bibles, you're welcome to follow along with us. 1 Peter chapter 1. If you're visiting with us, we're tickled to death to have you this morning. You feel free to worship God with us today. I invited a friend and he came. <laughs> Eric, glad to have you, brother. Eric Hubbard. He's moving into this country and and uh, Eric is, uh, me and him's become pretty good friends, good brother in Christ, and I'm glad to have him up here. And if anybody else is visiting this morning, welcome. We're glad to have you, amen. I want you to feel free to worship the Lord with us today. And, and uh, we, uh, I, I started studying this message early in the week. God started stirring my heart about a certain thought. And uh, you all pray for us today. I'd love for this to come out it, uh, the way, I want it to come out the way God wants it, amen. I'd love it to come out in a way that you really understand what I'm talking about when I tell you what we're preaching on today, uh, because how many knows that Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother? How many knows that he means it when he said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you? How many believes today that you'll never go through nothing in life what Jesus ain't been through? You, there's never a temptation going to come to you what Christ didn't see. And we're going to get into that if it be the help of the Lord uh, a little bit into this message. And you please pray for us and pray for the service today. Friend, if you're here and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't know peace until you know Jesus. You just don't know it until you know Jesus. When you get to know Jesus, you can truly have peace. Peace, as the Bible said, that passes all understanding. First Peter chapter 1, and you're welcome to stand with us if you'd like. To, we'll read together and start in verse 3. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 3 said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And the church said. Father we love you today. And thank you for your word. Let it lay in our hearts this morning. As we get into this service. Let the anointing come Lord and sit upon us. Loose our tongue and help us to speak exactly. What you'd have us to speak. We've studied. We've meditated. The devil has come after us and fit us. But God we have victory in Jesus. And we know that we are more than overcomers. We are more than conquerors. Through him that loves us. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for salvation. Jesus, thank you for taking what shame couldn't take. What nobody in this church could take. What nobody could ever get through, you went through so you could get us through it, Lord. We praise you for that. God, let the gospel lay in our hearts. Let us as Christians, everyone that's in this place today that is Christians, I pray, God, that you would draw them up nigh and closer to thee. Our Father, I pray, help us through this day and hour. That we live in. God we're seem like on every side and corner. People's being attacked. People's in despair. People's living in frustration. People's living in and seem like what they don't see no way out of. Help us God to stand firm upon the promises. Knowing you're with us through all things that we go through. Now God I love you. And I praise you today. Please save the soul that is nearest hell. Save the one in this place. God however many they are that need salvation, God. Save them today, Lord. We as the church, as the body of Christ, we draw nigh to you right now, Father. 
and ask you to draw now unto us. God, please save them. We pray that today. We pray you'd save them. Now, God, bless and heal our sick. Draw us into your will. We ask you to forgive us where we fail and come short. We ask all this, Jesus, in your precious name. And all the church said amen. 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 I'm going to preach a simple thought today, just a simple thought. You know, let's pray for all the sick. You know, there's still a lot of people that's fighting uh, sickness right now. Uh, I guess there's there's probably more cases of the flu than there's been in in several several years, and and uh, it, it's it's been unreal the sickness that's went around. They interviewed a doctor down in Somerset there this week, and he said he saw 300 patients over last weekend. 200 of them had the flu. There's a lot of sickness, but with His stripes we are healed. Amen. God can overcome sickness, and I know He will. It'll be on His time when He does it. I pulled up a little something here that I want to read in just a second. Uh, but today, if you'll notice this scripture, uh, what Peter said. He said, Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and according to His abundant mercy. How many knows God is merciful? Amen. And hath begotten us again unto a, li a lively hope by the resurrection of of Jesus Christ from the dead. In other words, we have hope while we're living. Amen. We got hope while we're dying, and we got hope after we're dead. I'm glad of that today. The Bible said if you got hope in this life only, you're of all men most miserable. I'm glad I ain't miserable today because I got hope in Jesus. Anybody else? Amen. Uh, but I want to preach on the thought today of He's been there. Amen. He's been there. And we're going to see some places where Jesus has been, amen. He's been there. You put that thought in the back of your mind. Now, when you're looking for advice or direction in something in your life, it's always a good idea uh, to talk to somebody who's had experience in whatever it is you're going through. Uh, and maybe they're going through what you've been through, and you need to give them advice, vice versa, however it is. But it's always good to talk to somebody that's been there. When I go to visit a place that I've never been to, I don't know nothing much about the roads. I can put you down on Google Maps. I can look it up in the, uh, in the, in, on the maps or, or however, the, however you want to go. I take an atlas with me when I go somewhere because uh, sometimes you can't find everything on them uh, online maps. But it's always a good idea to talk to somebody that's been to the place that you've been to. Do you all agree with that? Somebody that's been there has had experience of driving where you're driving to. They know the best places to stop. They know the best places to eat. They know where you should go, and they know where you shouldn't go. It's always good to talk to somebody that's been there. Me and Brother Scott was talking yesterday at the ball game, and I told Brother Scott that I may bring this up in the message today, and he's been to China. He lived there when he was a boy, and he can tell you a little bit about their country, a little bit about the mate. But I was reading in a book this week, and it's very interesting what the author brought up in this book. Uh, he said that they was over, a bunch of Westerners from here was over in China. And they went to this place that was called the Tiananmen Square. Uh, and the Tiananmen Square, uh, in 1989, uh, there was a student-led demonstration calling for democracy, free speech, and free press in China. It, it basically uh, it resulted in a martial law being called Hundreds, if not thousands of people lost their life. But the author said, here we was, a bunch of Americans, and we was on this bus, and we had a translator with us, and we was talking to her, or we was talking about amongst each other about what dates that we thought it happened and how many we thought were killed and what we thought it was about. And our translator just sat there quiet. And he said, we looked at her and said, do you know anything about the, the Tiananmen Square, or however you pronounce that? And she said, yes, I do. I was there. And she began to explain to them what it was like uh, being on that square between April and June of 1989 and seeing what took place. And, and it struck something with me. I, I, when I was reading that book this week, uh, 
Uh, you know, there's nothing you ever go through in your life what God ain't already been there. Amen. Uh, if you talk to somebody that's been there, uh, then they're going to give you a, a better direction of what's going on. And we're going to see that right here in the Scriptures in just a minute. Uh, I want to take you over in the book of Luke. If you want to go ahead uh, and be turning over there to Luke chapter 9. Uh, if you're having trouble financially, uh, if you're trying to figure out why things are so hard uh, in today's time, uh, let me tell you something about the Lord Jesus Christ uh, that we serve, that we love, uh, that saved us, friend. Uh, He's been there, amen. I, I want to remind to you today, and we're going to see this in Luke chapter 9, and let's just go ahead and start reading about the 57th verse. The Bible said, And it came to pass, as they went in their way, a certain man said unto them, Lord, I'll follow thee whithersoever thou goest. If you go over and read Matthew's account of this, that just happened to be a scribe. And the reason that he said that he wanted to follow him is because he saw some of the miracles that Jesus had already been doing. And if you know about the scribes and the Pharisees, they like the glorification of man. They like the pat on the back. They like to be set apart in a crowd and say, this is who I am. I've done great things for God. And you're just the average person. That's who they liked. And this was the answer that Jesus gave gave this man when he said Lord I'll go anywhere you go Jesus said foxes have holes birds of the air have nests but the son of man hath not word to lay his head you need to understand something today before we go any further in the service Jesus left the place that I'm going to one day to come to this place to make sure I could get to that place is that plain enough to understand. Uh, the Bible said he left the splendors of glory uh, and was made a little lower than the angels. Uh, he come in and laid down, friend. Uh, I was born of a virgin named Mary. Uh, they laid him as a, I like how that author put it in that book, uh, said they laid him down on a cow supper. Amen. Uh, I laid in a manger of hay. Uh, that wasn't the kingdom uh, attribute. Uh, that wasn't somebody that was supposed to be a king. Uh, uh, laying in a manger. Uh, all the scribes and Pharisees thought he'd come in great glory uh, like Solomon had. Uh, but Jesus went on to say one time in the gospel uh, that uh, uh, when he talked about the lilies of the field uh, and Solomon in all of his glory uh, was not arrayed like they are. In other words, uh, Jesus, uh, my friend, lived uh, the poorest life that anybody could ever live on earth. Uh, so if you're having trouble, guess what? He's been there, amen. Uh, Jesus, if you want to put it this way, uh, I was voluntarily homeless. Uh, you say homeless preacher. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, I mean he left his home in glory uh, to come down to this earth uh, to suffer and to die uh, so he can make you a home in glory. Uh, I may not have nothing much on this earth. Uh, I may uh, listen you. Uh, we live in a society uh, where eggs are getting to be seven dollars a dozen uh, and milk five dollars a gallon. Uh, and I'm going to tell you something, and I ain't no prophet, uh, but it's going to get worse uh, before it ever gets better. Uh, when's it going to get better, preacher? Uh, cloud opened up and there stood Jesus. That's when it's going to get better, amen. Uh, when we look out and see him uh, coming in the clouds of glory, uh, and he said, church. I come on up. Amen. And all them that died in Christ is standing there with him. I tell you, if I die today, I'm going to come back with him. Amen. And now the ground's going to come a brand new body. That ain't going to hurt. That's never going to suffer. That's never going to know any kind of sin. Why? Because Jesus has been there. Amen. And because he's been there, he's going to take me there. Bless God. So if you're having trouble this morning, getting by, he's been there. They asked him one time to pay tribute to Caesar. He told them to catch a fish. They caught a fish. It had a, a coin in its mouth. Jesus never said anywhere in his word that he would make you rich in the things of this world. 
But I'll tell you what he'll make you rich in. He'll make you rich in mercy. He'll make you rich in love. He'll make you rich in peace. And the peace that I have when I lay my head on the pillow tonight, money cannot buy. Amen, preacher. I'm knowing that my soul is not going to have one little square inch of hell. It's peace that passes all understanding. I to know that he can take somebody that was so unworthy, that was so vile as I was, and clean me up and apply the precious blood of Christ and make me fit to go to heaven. I didn't say I made me fit. You'll not make you fit. It'll be Jesus that'll make us a fit subject for the kingdom of heaven. He has begotten us again, church, unto a lively hope, a living hope. I'll go there because of Jesus. If you go there, it'll be because of Jesus. If I live to be a hundred year old, I'm going to preach it's Jesus. Oh, there's no other name given. What if my man must be saved? And at the name of Jesus, church ain't that a sweet name. We ought to just raise our hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, amen. Nobody no better. Nobody no better. About to get happy up here. I wore my tennis shoes today. Watch out. I might run. Me and Scott was watching that ball game last night. We were talking about how fast they're running. Scott, we might outrun them. We get in the spirit today, you reckon? We may do it. Amen. Well, Scott wears oxygen. The spirit gets a hold of him. He outrun every one of us. Amen. I'm not picking on Scott. I love him. I told him yesterday that we, you know, he, he uh, me and him had a good talk. And we were talking about things of the Lord. And I'm glad that God's been there. I'm glad if I lay down tonight, my heart's breaking for some reason. God said, it's all right. I've been there. I can help you through that, Shane. Let's read on. And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. And here's where people get all up in a tizzy and they get all kinds of confused on what Jesus said. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. You know what this man was asking? This man was saying, Lord, just let me live with my family until they die. It didn't mean their dad was ready to be buried. It meant let me live with my family because that was their custom that they was to stay in that house until that father died and they was to bury that father and the firstborn of that house was to take over that house. Am I telling you right? That's what they done. And that's what this man was asking. When Jesus said, follow me, he wasn't saying you don't love your family. You can't be with your father. That's not what he was saying. He was saying, you come with me and let's go out into this world and we'll gather more people to be with your father. Amen. But he wanted on his terms. You can't pick the time. Now listen to me if you're here and you're lost. You can't pick the time when you want to follow Jesus. You can't make an appointment to be saved. It, there is no such thing as a convenient season. As Paul was standing before King Agrippa and had given his testimony, and Agrippa said, Paul, almost, you persuaded me to be a Christian. Uh, but he was hoping that he would get something of Festus. He was hoping that he would get something of the Jews. He was hoping much money would have been given him of Paul. And he wanted another time. Uh, but it wasn't his time. Amen. His time was right then to accept the Lord. Uh, Felix trembled when he heard uh, about the story of Paul and how Jesus had saved him on the Damascus road and said, well, I've got a more convenient time. I'll call for you. Uh, church, there ain't no more better time than right now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Therefore if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. For today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Oh, now is the day when I need to get saved preacher. Right now, amen. Not 30 minutes later. Not when we're up singing. If God's called you, get up and come on. Amen. Right now's when they get saved. When God is asking you. Now's the time. Now. Very important. Why? Because we may not be here at the end of the service. It may not happen. Jesus may come. So Jesus wouldn't tell him you can't stay with your father. He simply said, Follow me. Can I tell you what's wrong with 90% of the church today? And you're going to say, I'm judging them. No, I'm not. But an apple tree will put out apples. Amen. A pear tree will put out pears. 
And I ain't judging them. But you're an old mother of fruits you bear. 90% of them have more important things to do in their eyes than to follow the Lord. There shouldn't be nothing more important every day of our life than to follow Jesus. How can I follow Jesus at work? You may be at work in the morning and some lost soul may come in and they may strike up a conversation and God may open a door and it may be as simple as quoting John 3.16. It may be as simple as inviting them to church. But if you'll follow what the Lord has to tell you, He said in that day, he, if you open your mouth, He'll give you in your heart what to say. Amen. And you can make an impression on them. I say, sure, you know what it's like? He said, do you let me stay with my father? How has Jesus been there? Don't you think heaven looked a lot better than this old earth? Amen. Now, if you imagine this earth before that, uh, that sin entered into the garden, it was heaven on earth. Amen. I can picture it somewhat. Uh, the Garden of Eden as being heaven on earth. Uh, and buddy, that was a paradise of a place uh, where that God physically walked with man. Amen. Because uh, man had not sinned. Uh, but sin entered in uh, and it separated man from God. Uh, Jesus knew uh, man before the garden. Uh, Jesus knew uh, man after the garden. Uh, Jesus didn't just imagine appear uh, when he was born in Bethlehem. He was there when his father said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So he'd been there, amen. Uh, can you imagine what it was like when this man looked at him and said, let me go with my father first. He could have looked at him and said, I had to leave my father uh, to come down here for you. But that wasn't his vendetta. That wasn't what he was here for. He told Zacchaeus, I come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's why I'm here. And another said, Lord, I'll follow thee, but let me first go bid farewell to them which are at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, and looking back is sent for the kingdom of heaven. We better take that for what it says. Amen. There's nothing to look back to. The Lord it is not of them that draweth back unto perdition, but it is of the Lord to the saving of the soul. Hebrews said, God didn't save us for us to live out here one week and to live in here the next week. Amen. He saved us uh, to be Christians uh, and to follow Him uh, and to shine a glory light for uh, lost in a dying world. Uh, and there's all kinds of people need Jesus today. Amen. Jesus said, there ain't nothing to go back. If you want your family with you, you follow me. I'm not, I'm not here today to bid my family farewell. I'm here today to preach to my family. Who's your family, preacher? I'm looking at them. I'm looking at them. I'm here to preach to my family today. We ain't farewelling each other. We might die one before the other, but it ain't so long. It's I'll see you in a little while. Amen. Mercy sakes alive. We was talking about it yesterday. Brother Steve Wilkerson and Brother Wayne House preached their hearts out here. Amen. In revival that we had this year. Brother Steve was talking about them spirits that was down there in prison. He said he imagined like Dr. Death was standing there at the door. And then there come that thief off the cross. When Jesus said today you'll be with me in paradise. And Dr. Death looked at him and said, are you Jesus? And he looked at him and said, no, but he's right behind me. Amen. And Jesus come down into that prison. And all them that were looking for him to come. Uh, buddy, he went down into death's prison. And he got them up out of that place. And then you read over in the book of Luke. Uh, where there was Abraham. I uh, sat there in Abraham. Oh, my goodness. Lazarus sitting there in Abraham's bosom. I'm telling you, the place that was reserved. Uh, God has never left a child behind. He ain't going to start now. He knows what it's like to leave heaven. He knows what it's like to be separated from the Father. And he knows what it's like to be unwanted in anything in this life. Amen. I tell you, our children, do you believe our children need a lot of prayer? Jesus knew what it was like not having any friends. He knew what it was like not having family with him. He knew what it was like having no worldly success. He knew what it was like having no money. He knew what it was like being misunderstood. These children are pushed to the limits 
to be made to feel like they've got to fit in before they amount to anything. It's our job as a church to make sure they know that Jesus loves them. And they ain't got to fit into nothing because they're born into the family of God. And Jesus loves them and He's coming back to separate them from all things that causes heartache in this life. Am I preaching the truth to anybody today? Do you believe what I'm saying? Uh, that this devil that is our enemy is out there to steal, kill, and destroy our children. Amen. He's trying to take them out one at a time. He don't want them in the house of God. Thank God for our Sunday schools. Thank God for our Wednesday nights. Thank God for them getting up here singing. I say we need more of it. Amen. Uh, because we're living in a time where they're the next church. Amen. And we got to get them ready. They might be the church of now instead of the church of tomorrow. Because they may not be a tomorrow. But you know what? If I ain't a tomorrow, guess what? He's been there. <laughs> Jesus is in a place where time is not known. He was there. And Ronnie, it amazes me that he come here and went back to there. Now, it don't take much to confuse me, does it, Jim? Jim knows me. Me and him talk a lot during the week. It don't take a much to confuse me. But I'll tell you something about Jesus. If I had left heaven and come down to this earth, the first day here I'd have been like, take me back. Amen. I don't believe there's anybody that's in heaven right now. As much as we miss them, what would say, Lord, just send me back for a little while. No, I believe their request would be, God, bring my family up to this place. This is the goal. This is the end which is also the beginning of all things. Jesus meant it when He said, I am the first and I am the last. Now let's finish this up. Turn to Matthew chapter 4 with me if you will. I'm trying to hurry. I don't want to wear you out. But I come to preach to somebody, there's nothing that you ever go through what He ain't been there. What He ain't been there. Amen. I mean, it's amazing. I thank God. And you know, I believe that's why that it's, it's expressed so many times in Paul's writings to the early churches, uh, that you are to respect the elders. Amen? Because why? They've been there. Amen? They know what it was like. We've got some that's sitting in our church right now that was in the old building down here and under the hill on Wednesday night when they wasn't three or four of them. It would have been real easy to close the doors. They've been there. They know what it's like when you miss somebody that ain't been there in three or four months or has, has just quit everything altogether. They know what that's like and they can help you get through it. Why? Because they've been there. Amen. You think Jesus don't know what it's like for people to quit Him? Didn't He feed a multitude one time with a with a, just the five barley loaves and two little fishes, a young man's lunch? He fed a whole multitude of people and buddy, by the time it was all said and done, when He got done preaching to them, He was left with the twelve He started with. Amen. He's been there. And guess what's going to happen in the last days? Can anybody tell me what's happening right now? The end will not come. Except first they come what? Great falling away. How many believe we're looking at that? Lost man ain't got nothing to fall away from. The church is leaving. Oh my goodness. Matthew chapter 4. Preacher, you don't know what things I have to deal with during the week. Temptation. Jesus has been there. Listen to this. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hunger. I can fast four hours and I'm hungry. Amen. Anybody here ever try to fast? Has anybody fasted? I, I've fasted for certain things and saw things answered. The longest I've ever fasted, I believe, was about five days one time. And I was a week, I couldn't hold my head up. 40 days. Can you imagine that? 40 days. He fasted in 40 nights. And afterward, he was a hunger. Why did he do that, preacher Shane? Because I'm going to tell you something about the Jesus we serve. When he walked this earth, he was man and he was God. And he had to put the flesh in its place. Amen. And Jesus know what he meant when he said, uh, Paul, when, I, when you're weak, I'm strong. Amen. So we got to get the old flesh out of the way because they're contrary to the Spirit. Amen. They don't go together. They can't work together. When the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, 
command that these stones be made bread. Now something you need to understand, I read this yesterday and I thought it was very interesting. Uh, the fourth floor where that Jesus was at up upon this mountain in the wilderness. Uh, my friend, do you remember what happened in the wilderness with Moses and the children of Israel? Didn't they wander there for 40 years? Amen. Didn't Jesus rape manna from heaven? He rained bread right out of heaven. Uh, uh, the historians say, say uh, that the wilderness that Jesus was was tempted in that all the stones on the floor of the forest looked like little loaves of bread. Can't you imagine that the devil in Jesus' mind was saying, hey, if you're Jesus, you make that right there bread. It already looks like bread. Your father, God, can make that into what you can eat. He done it for your brethren in the wilderness. Why won't he do it for you? Don't that sound like the devil, amen, trying to talk God down, trying to degrade him trying to take over your mind church and the book of James uh, it says greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world amen I'm telling you we need to hook up with that our Jesus our Savior our our God Almighty, uh, my friend, was hungered. And Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I heard a preacher preach on this one time, and he titled the whole message, but it is written. That was the whole message. Everything the devil said was wrong. He brought out a scripture where it started and said, but it is written, amen. You and I can live by the word of God. Also, the word of God was made flesh and dwelt among us. If we put our trust in him, we're going to make it. Amen. Amen. The devil taketh up in a holy city, set him on a pinnacle of a temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands, they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus looked at him and said, It is written again. <laughs> Woo! Glad it's written. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. You know what the devil was doing? Church, listen to me. He was trying to make Jesus force God into doing a miracle. He knew why he was here. And he tried to destroy him before he ever got to the cross. And when he got to the cross, he thought he had destroyed him. But boy, did that backfire on him. Amen. Amen. But he was trying to destroy him. He tried to destroy him before he was ever born. Do you remember that? After he was born, they had to go. Joseph had to get Mary and take him out. Take him out of that country. There was a proclamation came to kill all the firstborn. They was looking to kill him. The devil was trying to take him out. And he wanted to force God into doing a miracle. You that are praying for miraculous things, it'll happen on God's time. We can't force God to do nothing. Amen. We get it so backwards. If things are going to happen, we need it to happen in the will and the timing of God. Because if we do it in our will and our timing, it ain't going to be right. Amen to that. But uh, let's not try to force God to do a miracle. Let's believe God will do a miracle on His time and in His way. Amen. Because it, how many times does the devil use Scripture to try to turn around what God is saying? And Jesus said, that, or here we go again, the devil take it up to the seat in high mount, show him all the kings of the world and the glory of them, and said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. And I tell you, there's a lot of people that have fell down and worshiped Satan because all they want is the splendor and the glory and the money and all the stuff of this world. And guess what it's going to do? It's going to melt with a fervent heat for these days. There's nothing wrong with having nice things, with, with having a lot of money. Or, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you love it more than you love God, you got a problem. That's what he said right here. And he said, if you'll just worship me. And Jesus said, get thee hence, Satan. What's he say here again? For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. I come from a generation of people, two or three generations back, that would walk to the house of God. Anybody else? Raise your hand. You did, whether you realize it or not. 
Our elders was faithful, amen? We come to a time where people needed help in our in our country. They would they would drop what they was doing. They'd go help get their backer in their barn. They'd go help get their cattle in. They'd go help get their hay cut, whatever it was. We grew up in a time where it happened. I mean, how many members things like that? Now it's me, my three, and nobody else. Me, my four, no more. Not that way with God. Why? Because He's been there. You say, preacher, you've got a big family. You pastor a church. You know what it's like to be loved. You don't know, know what it's like to be alone. Jesus does. Because He's been there. The night before He died in the garden. He took Peter, James, and John with him. That's who it was, wasn't it? Peter, James, and John. And he said, sit here with me and watch a little while. They went to sleep. And he went out there and cried out. Till his tears came as great sweat and sweat came as great drops of blood. Father, if it's your will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Thank God for that prayer, amen. Because it's not God's will to end with prayers and Jesus come to save us, not to condemn us, amen. And here we see that Jesus knows what it's like to be alone. Being a Christian does not mean that bad things will never happen to you in your life. Say amen to me. Amen. Being a Christian does not mean that bad things will never happen to you in your life. Being a Christian means I've got somebody to go with me even up to the end of the world. What did Brother Jim read this morning? Jim, is it all right if I read it again? Amen. Where was we at? Romans chapter 8. Boys, get us a song ready if you will. Somebody needs Jesus here today. How many believes that in the house of God today? Maybe it was in Romans chapter 8 with me. Verse 35. Yes, sir. Brother Jim read this in devotion this morning. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness, or pearl, or sword, as it is written. There it is again. It's written. For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen. For I am persuaded, I be persuaded Christians today, 